Praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, today I'm going to be preaching about trusting in the Lord. Um, trusting in God's not always easy. Sometimes our own doubts get in our way, or we don't see Him in whatever situation we are in, or we fall short of His commands because our faith is not strong enough. Um, there's this example. This man, he was doing, going through his own personal life, just doing whatever it is, and he, hear, he hears God's voice outside. So he goes with his flashlight looking for him in the dark at night. He goes, he keeps hearing his voice, so he keeps falling. Then there's this hole he falls into, and he only catches himself with the branch. It's a deep hole. So he asks God, help me. Then God's like, just let go. He's like, why would I do that? That hurt me. Then after a couple hours, it's already daytime. He looks down, and the ground is only a couple feet away. So he should have trusted God no matter what happened, because God is there for him. So let's open to 2 Kings 17, 14. And it talks about how the Israelites, they went against God's word. They didn't trust in him. They, put, they went on his own under, their own understanding, starting at 14. But they would not listen and were as stiff-necked as their answers, ancestors, who did not trust in God, the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and the covenant that had made with their ancestors and the statues that had warned them to keep. They followed worthless idols and themselves became worthless. They imitated the nations around them, although the Lord had ordered them not to. They forsook all the commandments of the Lord their God and made themselves two idol cast in the shape of calves and an Asherah pole. They bowed down to all the staring hosts and they worshiped Baal. They sacrificed their sons and daughters in the fire. They practiced divination and, in the, and sought omens and sold themselves to the evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. So the Lord was very angered with Israel and removed them from his, his presence. Only the tribe of Judah was left. And even Judah did not keep the commandments of the Lord their God. They followed the practices of Israel and had introduced. Therefore, the Lord rejected all the people of Israel. He afflicted them and gave them into the hands of plunderers until the, he trust, thrust them from his presence. When the Lord, when he tore Israel away from the house of David, they made Jerob, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, from their king. Jeroboam enticed Israel away from following the Lord and caught them into commit a great sin. The Israelites persisted in all the sins of Jeroboam and did not turn away from them until the Lord removed them from his presence, as he has warned through all his servants and prophets. So, Lord, so the people of Israel were taken from their homeland into exile in Assyria, and they are still there. Um, Israel... They were not following God. They didn't put their trust in Him. They used their own understanding. Uh, they imitated the nations around her, as it says. These other nations nowadays could be the people around us. They're going against God, God's commands. They're not with Him. They do whatever they want every day. They don't care if they anger the Lord because they don't know what He wants. Uh, they make idols and worship fake gods. They practice divination. Then finally, the tribe of Judah, they started doing the same thing that Israel introduced to them. They made, after this, they made Jerob their king, and he led them into more sin. They lost trust in God and started doing their own things. What did God do about this? He removed them from their presence. This means that they can no longer be holy people with God. They didn't have God's protection. Under, under God's protection, they had their own city. They could they had their own king. They were all blessed. But when God's presence came away from them, they were thrown from their homeland and into exile in Assyria. They were also th given into the hands of plunderers and thieves. All these problems and troubles came around to them. In this world, we constantly have all these troubles with them. We lose faith in God. We don't trust Him. In our situations that we go through, sometimes we don't see God with us. 
So we just try to go on our own understanding. How we, well, however we do it, that's how just we, we understand it and do it. But there's still hope for all these people. If we open, uh, if we open up to Psalms 138, verse 3. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when, you hear what, when they hear what, what you have decreed. May they sing the ways of the Lord, for the gl glory of the God is great. Though the Lord exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hands against the anger of my foes. With, you, with your right hand, you save me. The Lord, you vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hand. We constantly have troubles, but God, he still answers us. He loves us. He has mercy on us because we are his creation. Whenever you make something, you don't just give up on it. You have to constantly go back and prove it. And he sees through all of our sins and he cleans us of it. If we are constantly asking God for forgiveness, but then going back and sinning, then that's not the right way to do it. We have to forgive, we have to ask him for forgiveness and be truly sorry about it and repent. If we keep going back, then God will not forgive us unless we stop this sin. So when we trust God, he will bless us. He will help us through all of our troubles. Amen.